All right, folks, so today I want to talk about the church numerals, which is an encoding of the integers into the untyped simple lambda calculus. It's kind of a cute theoretical construct to play around with. And I'm going to encode the church numerals in JavaScript using arrow functions so that it's super accessible to everyone. You can try it out right in your browser itself. You could do this in Chrome DevTools as well. I'm using jsconsole.com just because my screencasting setup won't work with the DevTools window. Anyway, so the basic idea of the church numerals is that the integer n is modeled as a function applied to an argument n times. That's it. Very simple idea. So using that idea, how would you encode the integer 0? It's very simple. You would simply apply a function to an argument zero times, which is the same as returning the argument, which is the identity function. You would express it something like this. Zero takes a function. It takes an argument x, and it returns x. That's the identity function. The next thing we want to do is, given a church numeral, construct the next church numeral. Construct its successor. So how would that work? Again, the idea is that you apply a function a given number of times. So if you have a church numeral n, its successor is simply the, the function applied one more time. We would express that something like this. Successor is a function which takes the church numeral n that you want to find the successor of, takes a function f and an argument x, and it returns f applied to x just one more time than n. So if you take n, which was your original church numeral, and you applied it to f and you applied that to x, that would give you the argument which you have to pass into f one more time. So I'm passing this whole expression into f. So now we have 0. We have the successor function, which means we can construct all the positive integers. 1 is simply the successor of 0. 2 is the successor of 1, and so on. Now, just to give a little bit more concreteness to what we're doing, let's try to figure out how we can map these abstract church numerals in Lambda Calculus back to native integers in JavaScript. So how would you take a church numeral and map it back to native integers. To do that, let me first define a simple function which takes an integer and returns the integer plus 1. And using this function, I can take a church numeral and convert it back to a native integer. So let me define a function which takes a church numeral and returns a native integer. So it would be something like church to int, and it would take a church numeral n and return n where it takes plus 1 as the function and applies it to the integer 0. So what is this doing? n is a church numeral which takes a function and an argument and applies the function to the argument n times. So you're taking the integer 0 and the function plus 1 and you're applying plus 1 to 0 n times, which means you're getting back the integer n. So let's try this with some of the church numerals we've defined so far. That's correct. Let's try it with 1. That's correct. Let's try it with 2. That's correct. All right, so great. We have a function which takes a church numeral and gives us back our regular native integers. Now, just for convenience, let's define a function that goes the other way around, it takes a native integer and constructs a church numeral out of it. And that would go something like this. It takes a native integer. And if it is 0, then it simply returns the church numeral 0. Otherwise, it returns the successor of the church numeral one less than it. Now, let's try making some church numerals. Uh, let's say 5 is int to church of 5. So 5 is the church numeral for 5. And we could verify that this was correct by going the other way, converting the church numeral to a native integer. And that gives us back the native integer 5. So that's working as expected. So we have the successor function. We have some convenience functions to go back and forth between native integers and church numerals and lambda calculus. Let's try to define some arithmetic expressions. 
So the next thing we want to define is addition of two church numerals. Let's see what that would look like. So I can define add. It takes a church numeral n, a church numeral m, and then it takes a function f and an argument x. And what does it return? So now we want to construct the function f applied to its argument n plus m times. So let's take one of the church numerals f and if we give it f and x that means f is applied to x m times. Now if we wrap that up as an argument and give that to n where n takes a function f and the value of applying f to x m times what what does that mean it means that you have taken the function f you've applied it to x m times and then you've supplied that as an argument to n which means you're applying it n more times so that's n plus m times in all so let's see if this works with some simple checks uh, we had five we had two Let's see if we can add 5 and 2. And we can do add 5, 2. All right, and that gives us 7. So addition works. Now let's try multiplying two church numerals. So we would say mult of two church numerals. It takes a church numeral n, a church numeral m, and a function f and an argument x. And how would we express multiplication? So we want to construct f being applied to x n into m times. So let's look at m applied to f without applying it to the argument x. So m applied to f is simply f applied m times. So this is a function which can take x and apply f to x m times. Now what if we pass that in as an argument to n? What does this give us? So here's a function f applied m times and we're passing it as the first argument to n. And if we now apply it to x, what's going to happen? The church numeral n is going to take this function and apply it to x n times. But what is this function? This function is f applied m times. So if you take this function which is f applied m times and you apply it to x n times over you'll get n times m as the number of times that this function f is applied to x. All right now let's try this with a few church numerals and see if this works. So let's do church to int we had 2 and 5 we can try multiplying 2 by 2 gives us 4, we can try multiplying 2 by 5, gives us 10, we can try multiplying 5 by 5, and that gives us 25. So it looks like our formulation of multiplication is working. Let's go one further and try to define exponentiation before we wrap up. All right, so we want to define n raised to the power of m. So this takes a church numeral n and we want to raise it to the power of m. Now this has the simplest expression but it takes a little bit of unpacking. So we're taking two church numerals where m is the exponent and n is the base and how will we construct a church numeral which is a function applied n raised to m times. Now the expression is really simple it's simply n m but why would this work? What's what's going on over here? So this will take and give us a church numeral for n raised to the power of m. So what is the meaning of this expression? This is the church numeral n and it takes m as its function argument. So this would look something like n takes a function f applied m times. And what would happen if you applied this to x? So it would take this expression, this function, and apply it to x n times. So this is m. So what would this mean? You would take f applied m times to x, and then you would do this. You would apply this function n times. So that is 
you would apply f to x n to m times. So let's try this with a few church numerals that we have. We can say church to int of, let's try 2 raised to the power of 2. That's 4, simple enough. We had 5, we can try 2 raised to the power of 5. That's 32, that's correct. We could try, we could raise 5 raised to the power of 2. That's 25, that's correct. We could try 5 raised to the power of 5 which is, that's the correct answer. All right, so there you have it. We've taken the church numerals, expressed them in JavaScript, and converted back and forth between the church numerals and native integers, and defined addition, multiplication, and exponentiation on the church numerals. And you can see that they're pretty intuitive and easy to understand constructs. So I hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you next time.